presidency is the most powerful office in the world. It's an office that not only tests your judgment, perhaps even more importantly, it's an office that tests your character. Because you not only face moments when you need the courage to exercise the full power of the presidency, you also face moments where you need the wisdom to respect the limits of the power of the office of the presidency. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. But today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. So not only test your judgment, perhaps even more importantly, it's an office that can test your character. Nearly four years ago, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol to stop the peaceful transfer of power. We all saw it with our own eyes. We sat there and watched it happen that day. Attack on the police, the ransacking at the Capitol, a mob literally hunting down the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Gallows erected to hang the Vice President, Mike Pence. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. The public has a right to know the answer about what happened on January 6th before they are asked to vote again this year. Now, because of today's decision, that is highly, highly unlikely. It's a terrible disservice to the people of this nation. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. So now, now the American people will have to do what the courts should have been willing to do, but will not. The American people have to render a judgment about Donald Trump's behavior. The American people must decide whether Donald Trump's assault on our democracy on January 6th makes him unfit for public office in the highest office in the land. The American people must decide if Trump's embrace of violence to preserve his power is acceptable. Perhaps most importantly, the American people must decide if they want to entrust the President once again, the presidency, to Donald Trump, now knowing he'll be more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. He believed power was limited, not absolute. And that power always resides with the people. I know I will respect the limits of the presidential powers I have for three and a half years. But any president, including Donald Trump, will now be free to ignore the law. I concur with Justice Sotomayor's dissent today. She, here's what she said. She said, in every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. With fear for our democracy, I dissent, end of quote. So should the American people dissent. I dissent. May God bless you all, and may God help preserve our democracy. Thank you. And may God protect our children.
have a big case today. This uh, judge isn't allowing me to go. Uh, we have a big case today in the Supreme Court on presidential immunity. A president has to have immunity. If, it, if you don't have immunity, you just have a ceremonial president. You won't have a president. Wait, 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 wait. They've taken my constitutional right away with a gag order. That's all it is. It's election interference. This whole thing is election interference. We would be creating a situation in which we would be saying, is, this is what you're asking us to say, which is that a president is entitled not to make a mistake, but more than that. A pre president is entitled for total personal gain to use the trappings of his office without facing criminal liability. Your Honor, I would say three things in response to that. First, the doctrine that immunity does not turn on the allegedly improper motivation or purpose is something that this Court has reaffirmed in at least nine or ten That's cases. absolute immunity, but qualified immunity does say that whatever act you take has to be within what a reasonable person would do. So what, what, was, up with the pardon, what was up with the pardon for President Nixon? I, I think mean, it, uh, if everybody thought that presidents couldn't be prosecuted, then what, what was that about? Well, he was under investigation for both private and public conduct at the time, official acts and private conduct. And I think everyone has properly understood that the president, since like President Grant's carriage riding incident, everyone has understood that the president could be prosecuted. At least Counsel, on, private on, that, on that score, you, there does seem to be some common ground between the, you and your colleague on the other side that no man's above the law and that the president can be prosecuted after he leaves office for his private conduct. Is that right? We agree with that. What is the consequence in terms of going forward with your uh, acknowledgement that those are private acts as opposed to official acts? The official stuff has to be expunged completely from the indictment before the case can go forward, and there has to be a determination, at least on remand, of what's official, a two-stage uh, determination of what's official and what's private. Well, if you expunge the official part from the indictment, how do you, I mean, that's like a, a, a one-legged uh, stool, right? I mean, giving somebody money isn't bribery unless you get something in exchange. And if what you get in exchange is to become the ambassador to a particular country, uh, that is official, the appointment that's within the president's prerogatives. The unofficial part is I'm going to get a million dollars for it. So if you say you have to expunge uh, the official part, how does that go forward? Uh, <laughs> this particular indictment, where we say virtually all the overt conduct is official, we don't believe it would be able to go forward. In assessing the uh, uh, official acts of a president, do you differentiate between the president acting as president and the president acting as candidate? Yes, we do. And, and we don't dispute, essentially, the blazing game discussion of that. Okay. But of course, that has to be done by objective determinations, not by looking at what was the purpose of what you did. This. say presidential immunity, very powerful presidential immunity is imperative, or you practically won't have a country anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you.